Should you invest in real estate now? If you turn on the news, besides the pandemic, everyone is talking about the housing bubble. Experts are warning that the housing market will crush in 2021. And as a piece of an evidence, they bring the example of the 2008 crash that 2020 is following the exact same patterns, so the housing market should crash again next year. And this is pretty interesting because if we are in a bubble that will burst next year, it will present a golden opportunity for a lot of people to jump in and make a fortune. Because a housing bubble means that houses will be sold at a fraction of their real price once the bubble bursts. Imagine a $200,000 home that you wanted to buy is suddenly on sale for $70,000 or $80,000 and interest rates are so low that you can get it immediately if you can make the down payment. Doesn't that sound like a golden opportunity? Everyone likes investing in real estate because for some weird reason we believe that real estate prices will always rise. However, we have seen countless times that's not the case and house prices can actually drop. To figure out if investing in real estate now is a good idea or not, we have to understand a few things. Do home prices always rise? How housing bubbles are created? And finally, when exactly the market will crash? Before we move on, I want to take a moment and thank our sponsor, Skillshare. If you want to learn how to analyze companies like professional investors and find out if a certain company is a good investment or not, you have to take this course by Skillshare because it will teach you everything a professional investor uses to value a company. And it's taught by Business Casual, the YouTube channel you probably know. I've taken the course, it's short, animated and worth your time. Skillshare is an online learning community for creatives where millions come together to take the next step in their creative journey. Skillshare offers thousands of inspiring classes for creatives and curious people on topics including illustration, design, photography, video, freelancing and more. And all that is for less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. But because you guys are the best audience in the entire YouTube, the first 1000 people who click the link in my description will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium. By the way, you will be supporting the channel by signing out to Skillshare. And now, let's get back to the video. One of the tools that the Fed has at its disposal to control the economy is the interest rate. When the economy is rising too fast, the government intervenes and raises interest rates to stop the flow of capital into the market so that the economy doesn't turn into a bubble. Because high interest rates means borrowing money becomes expensive, which means less people would borrow money, which will result in less spending. And vice versa. That's known as monetary policy. So back in 2000s, when the dot-com bubble burst, the stock market lost almost $5 trillion of market cap. The economy was in a recession, so the Fed lowered interest rates from around 3% to 2.5%, then to 2%, all the way down to as little as over 1% to encourage everyone to borrow money and spend in order to get back the economy on its knees. And it worked! By 2003, the economy began recovering. By 2006, the stock market reached its pre-dot-com crash levels. But low interest rates means low rate of return on government bonds and interest on fixed deposits. It no longer made sense for investors to buy government bonds or keep their pile of cash in the banks, since inflation would slowly eat it away, especially when a few years ago they made unbelievable returns during the dot-com bubble. The S&P 500 rose by over 400% from 1995 to 2000. So investors were looking for a new opportunity a safe and rising investment to throw their money at, and real estate seemed like a great idea. But investors don't have the time to deal with individual buyers, so financial institutions came up with a brilliant idea. Since interest rates were so low, everyone was buying a house. So financial institutions would take these mortgages, bundle them together and sell them to investors in forms of shares. These investments proved to be really great. But banks ran out of financially responsible people to loan mortgages. But investors still wanted to buy these investments. 
So banks started giving subprime mortgages or mortgages to people with really low credit scores. People didn't necessarily have enough income to keep making the mortgage payments. Why? Because they would take these mortgages, bundle them together and sell them to investors. Low interest rates and rising home prices kept attracting more and more investors. The reason why these investments appeared so seductive is because the investors argued that even if they would default on their loan, it's not a big deal. The bank can take back the house and sell it. And since home prices were rising, they would still make a profit. It seemed like the perfect investment. So the banks gave mortgages to everyone. That inflated home prices to unbelievable heights. But at some point, one of the borrowers defaulted. So his home was put on sale, then the second one, then the third. Soon, there were so many homes on sale, but not enough buyers, and home prices began to fall. When people saw that their $500,000 mortgage house is suddenly worth only $250,000, it stopped making sense for them to keep making mortgage payments, so they walked away from them. Now, there were even more houses on sale, driving home prices even lower. So the banks were left with a lot of worthless mortgages that no one wanted to buy, so they went bankrupt one after another. But how is this all related to the 2021 crash? Well, the government intervened and saved the big banks in return that they would tighten their regulations and won't randomly give mortgages unless they have high enough credit scores and are able to make the monthly payments. For some time, they did. If in 2010 you would try to get a mortgage, the banks would require you endless numbers of documents to prove that you are financially responsible and you have a stable job that will allow you to make mortgage payments on time. So home prices returned back to their pre-crisis levels by 2012. The only reason that the market would crash again is if house prices will start rising dramatically again and there won't be a demand to meet it. In the last 8 years, home prices did actually rise, but mortgages were no longer given to irresponsible borrowers. In fact, in 2016, the Fed stepped in and raised interest rates from 0.25% to 0.5% so that it won't turn into a bubble. By 2019, interest rates were at 2.5%. Borrowing money became expensive, although the number of mortgages dropped to a certain extent, but the demand was still there, so prices kept rising. When the pandemic stopped the economy, it was clear that the housing market is going to crash because overnight millions of people lost their jobs, which means they won't be able to continue making their mortgage payments and default on their mortgages, which means suddenly there are going to be too many houses in the market as it was back in 2008. So home prices will start falling, which means the housing market will crash. But what we didn't take into account is that the Fed just recently went through a housing crash, so it knew how to stop it. First of all, the government distributed stimulus checks to help everyone to pay the bills. The government granted financial aid to businesses who retained their employees so most people could keep paying the bills, including their mortgage. And to seal the case, the government introduced a forbearance plan, which means basically you can put your mortgage payments on hold until 2021. And that means that no one is going to default on their loan this year. And by next year, a vaccine is hopefully will be available and everyone will get back to work and keep making their monthly mortgage payments. But why in the middle of a pandemic, home prices are still rising? Remember in the beginning of the video we talked about how the Fed lowers interest rates during recessions to help stimulate growth? Well, that's exactly what they did. The Fed lowered interest rates to 0.25%, which made borrowing money more affordable. So the demand for homes rose while the supply didn't. Is the market overvalued? Probably, but it's definitely not a bubble. Once the 2020 roller coaster will end and life will get back to normal, home prices may depreciate to what they really are worth, but that might not happen next year. Of course, if you check individual cities like San Francisco, New York City or LA, home prices might be slightly more overvalued, but that's pretty much about it. So, 
Is it a good idea to invest in real estate now? Probably no, since the market is slightly overvalued and a correction might happen next year. On the other hand, timing the market isn't a great idea either, especially the housing market, since home prices do not jump up and down like stocks, so you might end up waiting a few more years. That's it for today. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up if you have enjoyed it, and if you're new around here, smash that subscribe button and the bell besides it. Thanks for watching, and until next time.